T-shirt style necklines may be sewn onto woven fabrics, T-shirt knit fabrics, or even fabrics that you have machine knitted yourself. The process is almost identical for all three applications. Here's how we do it. Any t-shirt pattern will do for this. I drafted this one myself with a traditional crew neck, but then cut it out more deeply because I didn't want it that snug. And you can do that whatever the pattern actually says. When you cut it out, you need to leave room for the fact that the neckband is going to take up some width and bring it back in. I like to cut my neckbands two inches wide, but they won't end up being two inches. First of all, it's going to be folded. So this outer fold will end up over here as the inside top edge of the neckline. All the cut edges will be aligned. So first we've reduced it to one inch, and then when we sew it onto the neckline, we will reduce it by another quarter inch. So that makes it a, about a three quarters inch neckband. It will be sewn on the way I have it oriented here and then later it'll flip up and we may or may not top stitch it to help it stay there. Here I have my band laid out around the existing neckline so you can see something important. This is all very stretchy stuff. Both fabrics have lycra in them in this case. Usually the band will whether or not the blouse does. Therefore, you almost always want the band to be a little bit shorter than the actual neckline by two to four inches. It won't seem to pull it in, but that's the way we get it to lay down around the curve nicely. There are a couple of options here. I could have left part of the left shoulder seam opened and applied the neckband straight and then finished the shoulder seam, but the neater finish is to go ahead and sew that seam and then sew a seam sewing the end is, ends of the band together where they are presently safety pinned. Make sure you don't twist it and there is a right and a wrong side to most knits. On the right side you'll be able to see in real life columns of knit stitches. The back side tends to look more flat and more matte. Now it's okay if you want to use it backwards. Just be aware of that and choose knowingly rather than not because if you've used this fabric in other places as I have on this one, you want them to match and although they don't look very different, they do reflect the light a little bit differently. I think you can see in that view. Now we want to pin the band evenly around the neckline and here that process has begun by marking the center back and center front and I opted to put my band seam at the center back. That's one traditional method. The left shoulder is another. Just choose the one that you like better. So with these two pinned, we can now stretch it out evenly and pin all three layers, the garment layer and the two band layers. All those cut edges should align and be pinned evenly around the neckline. Here it is evenly pinned. Those who are just learning to sew are going to need more pins than experienced seamstresses because if you're experienced your fingers have already learned how to manage this. It's normal that the knit edges are going to roll. It's the nature of knit and it's not really a problem but your fingertips are going to need to keep it all together. So if the maximum number of pins does not do the job for you there's a step I'm not doing, but I will describe. You could hold the two edges of the neckband together and use a narrow zigzag stitch on your sewing machine to baste them. What you want is something narrower than the width of the stitch you're going to use to actually apply the band to the garment because we don't want it to be seen later but it can help stop that rolling and make it easier to keep things together. And before we proceed, we need to check and make sure does the pulling in, which there will be some of because the band is smaller than the neckline, does it seem pretty even around or is there a bunched up area and then a flat area? I've checked mine already and I'm satisfied that it's adequately even. 
this next step can either be done with the serger, as I am doing, or with the regular sewing machine. If you use the regular sewing machine, use a short, narrow zigzag along the stitching line, and then later finish it with a wide zigzag to overcast. The serger will do it all in one step. Make certain that all three of these edges stay aligned. It's going to take both hands usually to do it, even though you have the pins. And we'll stretch slightly as we sew, so as not to get any puckers where the band is pulling the neckline. For this step, in. we really don't use the knife much. I allow mine to stay in position and trim off any unevenness at the edges, but I don't ask it to remove any seam allowance. I've already trimmed that to the desired width. Work slowly. Stop often and double check the alignment of those edges because they love to slide out of position. If using a serger as I am, the pins absolutely must be removed as you work. But I recommend it even if you are using a sewing machine and have oriented your pins opposing the seam so that technically the sewing machine will sew over them. However, I don't think it does as even a job of this neckline if you leave them in position. So I recommend removing them as you go. They're very close together, so that doesn't leave a lot of fabric that you have to manipulate. Because a neckline is something of a tight curve, particularly on children's wear, you do need to make an effort to make sure that no garment layers get caught underneath. This is a four-thread serger, which is ideal, as is five, but a three-thread serger will do a nice job, too. We're all the way around, and at this point, the job can be finished if we want to. This is where the stitching beginning and ending overlapped, and you need to secure your tail by whatever method you choose. And the garment is now completely wearable. But we do have the option of top stitching, which makes this area a little bit sharper and keeps the seam allowance turned down towards the garment. Both ways are fine, but I think I will top stitch this one. For knits, we're going to use a narrow zigzag for this job. My dials go from one to four, zero to four, both on stitch length and stitch width, and I have picked one and a half. Here's what we're going to try to do. I'm using the zigzag foot, of course. The right hand edge of the opening should stay aligned with where the two fabrics join and we shouldn't let any extra fold back over. Try to keep that folded open. I don't have any difficulty keeping the seam allowance folded towards the fabric with my fingers, but if you think you will, you can pin it. And off Stitch slowly so as to maintain maximum control. I find that the foot pressure that I use for most projects tends to work fine here, but that's something you should check in advance on scraps. Machine knitters can do the same thing. This piece of knitting is from a standard gauge machine, and although you can use any gauge of machine, standard gauge is certainly the easiest. So I'm going to cut a neckline in it. Please do not gasp in horror. This would be a doll size neckline. I'm just going to cut. I do this all the time. It's true, these things could run if I tugged on them. I'm not going to tug on them, so all will be well. I have a piece of cotton lycra knit, very stretchy, cut to two inches wide, just as I did for the other garment, the actual garment that was sewn only. We're going to treat this neckline that we've knitted and then cut just the same way that I treated the purchased fabric. It will be a little bit different, of course, because our fabric is thicker. Now, if I were to use the exact length of the neckline I cut, this would be it. And I'm going to shorten it up a little bit for the reasons I already explained, to get a good non-droopy fit and make the inner edge lay down. 
of course this is really only half a neckline but the process is just the same as you already saw. I'm not going to use the serger to make the neckline shape any smaller however I will allow it to trim those fuzzy yarn ends off and if I feel like it's necessary I can always serge twice to tidy it We're up. We're now doing the exact same thing as with purchased fabrics. Going slowly and carefully is equally important, even more so, and making sure that these edges align is super important. And when I say edge, you have to make that in your mind the solid edge of the fabric that you knitted. The fuzzy things that hang over need to get trimmed off and you would, if you called the outer, outer tips of the fuzz the edge, you would not get a neat seam. And here's the completed neckline and there's the back. Machine knitters, I am going to suggest that you buy some commercial knits starting with t-shirt knit and working up to hatchy knits and practice on those and that will allow you to get these skills in hand to the point that working on your machine knitted fabrics goes smoothly. I've found some wonderful sellers on Etsy who sell t-shirt knits and hatchy knits very inexpensively because they're odds and ends and they're super for practice. Just as for the purchased fabrics, we can leave this as it is or we can top stitch it down and I will top stitch it down. I'm going to make my zigzags a little bit wider and longer for this fabric to compensate for the As thickness before, of it. So slowly use the opening in the pressure foot to guide your stitching line and readjust the fabrics often to keep them aligned. Here's the completed edge. If it does not look perfect right away a shot of steam will usually fix matters. Here's the instance. Machine knitters who want to learn more about sharp looking sewn finishes for knits may enjoy my book Knitting and Sew On. Quite a lot of unusual techniques are included. It is cut and sew, but it goes way beyond the usual limits of cut and sew. If you have sewing skills, why not make use of them for designer looks?